Hello Anna, Anna and everyone else, it's Stefan Knott, I hope you're all keeping safe. I've been furloughed so I spent quite a lot of time sitting in the garden and in the living room uh, watching the birds pret about in the garden and do their various things. So I thought I'd tell you a story about birds and this is how the wren became king of the birds. One day the birds decided that they needed a king. They wanted someone to represent them with the other animals and to give them wisdom and advice when they needed it. But of course this was never going to be an easy decision to make. There were just too many different kinds of birds. There were great big ones with wingspans as large as a man and little tiny ones that jump from twig to twig. There were beautifully feathered ones with bright plumage that they like to show off to everyone who can see. And then there are little dark brown ones that dart about in the undergrowth, all hidden away. There are birds that eat seeds. There are birds that eat worms. There are birds that eat fish. There are birds that eat mice. And there are birds that eat other birds. So you can see this was never going to be solved by a simple discussion. So instead, they decided to hold a competition. Whoever could fly the highest in the sky would become their king. And so they all gathered there on the day. The little birds turned up first, all jostling like marathon runners at the beginning of a race. The crows pecked at the magpies and the magpies shrieked at the starlings and the starlings rolled their eyes at the blue tits and the robins just yelled at everybody. Then the bigger birds turned up, the peacocks and the flamingos and moved everyone out of the way so they could have a good spot. And then finally, the birds of prey, the hawks and the buzzards and the eagles and the condors all descended and just shoved the other birds out of the way so they got the best spot. And then they all took off, flapping their wings with a great roar, creating a huge shadow beneath them. And all they went up and they went up and up together. No one wanting to give up before anyone else did. But it was a long, hard day. And by mid-afternoon, the little birds were starting to feel tired. The hummingbird flapped its wings too fast and had to drop out. And the swallows drifted and sang their way back down to the ground. A little bit later, the bigger birds, the cuckoos and the pigeons, cooed and preened and decided they were going to give up. Then it was just the birds of prey left, the hawks and the buzzards and the eagles and the condors. But even they, one by one, began to drop out. Until, by the end of the afternoon, the golden eagle looked round and he saw he was the only one left. And he thought to himself, yeah, you're doing pretty well here, mighty eagle. You've got the highest. You're going to be king of the birds. And he swooped round and did a victory lap. And now he was very tired, so he thought he'd descend back to the ground. But as he started to do so, he heard a little voice above him. It was the wren. I'm the king of the birds. I'm the king of the birds. The wren had hidden herself in his feathers and taken a ride all the way up to the top of the sky. And when the eagle had got so tired that he couldn't go on anymore, the wren had come out and flown above him. So she had flown the highest. The eagle was very cross at this, but he was also very tired and had tried as, as much as he could to fly a bit higher, but he couldn't. So the two birds descended slowly back down to the ground, the wren staying a reasonable amount away from the eagle's great big beak. When they reached the ground, it was complete uproar. The little birds were thrilled. The wren would represent them. They would protect them from the other animals and also give them advice on how to stay safe with the eagles and the other big birds. But the big birds were horrified. They didn't want the wren as their king, a little brown rubbishy bird. How embarrassing. So they refused to acknowledge the result. But then the wren stood up and said, hey, you wanted the eagle to win because he's big and strong. I won because of my cunning. Why is that wrong? And the owl adjudicator said that the wren had a good point and really they hadn't had any rules. So technically the wren was right and she was king of the birds. But the eagles were having none of it. So they chain, decided to go for a second competition. And whoever won the second competition was going to be the king 
regardless of how, how unhappy anyone else was. Now the owls decided this one and they're quite clever birds and they picked something they knew they would excel at. It would be the winner would be whoever swooped the closest to the ground. By this point it was twilight and most of the birds dropped out. They were daytime birds and they were worried about banging their heads on the ground if they swooped low in this kind of light. So one by one the owls took their turns, all swooping lower and lower to the ground until it was the turn of the great grey owl. And he flew up and he swooped down and down and down and down, so low that every blade of grass he flew over was bent double. And as he swooped along the ground, he thought, yeah, you've got this, no one's gone this low. You're gonna be king of the birds, well done. But then he heard a voice below him. It was the wren. While the uh, eagle wasn't looking, while the owl wasn't looking, the wren had swooped into a little mouse hole, which obviously is lower than the rest of the ground, and so she had gone the lowest. The owl was furious, and he went up to the wren in the hole and said, you might be the king of the birds now, but if you, as soon as you come out of that hole, I'm going to gobble you up. And so the wren stayed in the hole all day, all night, all day, all night, for several days. Because during the day, the eagle stalked around waiting for her to come out so she could, they could gobble her up. And at night, the owls did the same. So she had no way of escaping. But then one morning, the morning sun came up and the first ray of light caught the eye of the owl that was watching and dazzled him. Quick as a flash, the wren flew out of the hole and hid in a bush. So as she was safe. And so that is how the wren became king of the birds. But it's also why the wren stays low to the ground and hidden in bushes and trees, because she knows that if she flies out in the open air, it's only a matter of time before an eagle comes and gobbles her up or an owl swoops down and grabs her by the neck. But of course, the little birds are really happy because they go to the wren and ask for her advice on how to keep away from the big, mean birds. The end. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you're following the wren's advice and staying safe inside away from all the dangers outside. Goodbye.